Berlin Circus Festival is going to have the time to join us today because they are in a crazy uh, race right now to their uh, festival. So luckily they managed to find an hour to join us. But I sort of prepared like a plan B and therefore the session is going to be divided into sort of two parts. One uh, in which we will um, have a discussion around the Berlin Circus Festival. And then I will try to integrate that into um, a presentation of a research that the IETM uh, is currently doing and is very relevant to our discussion. And also I hope that it will be uh, naturally um, be uh, connected to the things that we will discuss with the Berlin Circus Festival team. Um, I wanted to just maybe give a short uh, introduction to, to this session and say that uh, after yesterday's discussions, uh, when thinking about the design of the sphere, I think that uh, it came up that in, there are a lot of potential, various potential end users. Artists are one side of this equation and, there are, and then there are the organized curators, producers, which um, Josa Johannes uh, are um, part of this community and as well as myself. And uh, I just wanted to say that originally when I came into this, pro into this project, I was uh, pretty convinced and I even think I said it on camera at some point that uh, we want to get rid of the curators and the organizers and so on. But after Ella's, uh, Sarah's and also Chem's presentations, I realized that there are functions within the ecosystem of performing arts that I'm not sure we can or we want to get rid of as the um, curators. I really like Chem's um, use of the metaphor of the, of, the, um, of the chef that takes the different elements and then throws them into the pot. And I think that this overview that producers and curators have is a function that we uh, might want to keep. Uh, I think that what we are actually might want to, to do is to um, uh, like definitely maybe try to get rid of those like parental relationship that Sarah was describing, but uh, uh, transition them into a more collaborative process and a more um, where everybody understands the gain from this collaboration and the power relations become more transparent. I think this is also true to what Laura was referring to when she was talking about investors, that through the sphere, we might have the potential for funders to uh, make that relationship more transparent to everybody in the, um, in the ecosystem. Um, uh, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna introduce the Berlin Circus Festival in one minute. I just want to continue the short presentation. Um, just a moment. Yeah, so um, no, I'm gonna jump forward and, um, and first present to you guys and then. So I have the great pleasure of introducing you, uh, Josa Kölbel, Johannes Hilike, and uh, Farina Berendt. Um, I didn't know that uh, Johannes and Farina are gonna join us as well. So I'm gonna present Josa and maybe Farina and Johannes can say a few words about themselves. Josa is um, based in Berlin, is from Berlin originally, is an artist, curator, and producer. Um, with the Berlin Circus Festival, of which he is uh, the co-founder, together with Johannes. They are one of the main partners of the Sphere and will be hosting a few events uh, in the future, residencies and showing pilot performances. Um, and he functioned also as the curator for the Circus for Haus der Berliner Festspiele, which is an important um, theater uh, institution in Berlin. Uh, Johannes, Farina, maybe you want to uh, give a short introduction about yourselves? Yes, yes. I'm Farina, I'm the production assistant of Josta and Tanius, and I work with them since 2017, and I as well have a master's degree in cultural management. Johannes? Hello, I'm Johannes, I'm the co-founder of the Berlin Circus Festival together with Josta. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I would like to um, uh, get inspiration from the IETM um, mapping project that they did and I'm going to just shortly uh, share my screen. Um, let me see if I managed to do that. 
Are you, um, do you see my screen now? The yes. Perfect. Um, so basically, uh, the IETM, which I'm going to describe it, uh, it's an international network of uh, performing arts institutions and organi organizations and individuals uh, worldwide. And um, they are currently doing, like, literally the last session is going to happen tomorrow. They're doing a mapping of a transition to a sustainable future for the performing arts. Uh, they did a pretty amazing job at um, uh, de designing this, uh, this graph, which uh, on this side of the graph, we have the unsustainable practices. And sustainable, they define it in a very wide, uh, wide frame. So um, they, they also intentionally kept that term uh, ambiguous in order to allow for diversity of, um, of reflections. So on this side of, of the uh, scheme, we see unsustainable practices or unsustainable um, uh, tendencies. And then on, the, on this side of the uh, scheme, we, saw, we see the sustainable future that is, um, that is uh, the intention to reach by 2040. They, I think they just chose um, some year, uh, which is in the near future, so it's kind of attainable, but it's quite random, I think, as well. Um, what is interesting is that this is a completely collaborative uh, research, so they invited uh, practitioners from the uh, ecosystem of the performing arts in order to uh, join this uh, mapping process. And, um, and they are doing it in a few different sessions. They started from the pre pressure radar, um, which is uh, really interesting. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to move with this. No. Yes, um, which they divide into um, to five categories, the, the unsustainable practices, the artistic, the human, the social, the environmental, and the economic. Um, and then they um, also looked at, this is the current, this is the present state. And also then they moved to um, the promises radar, which kind of um, shows the, um, current practices, the current emergent practices of sustainable behavior within the uh, ecosystem of the performing arts. So I just want to use this kind of framework to start the discussion with the uh, uh, guys from the um, Berlin Circus Festival and to really uh, get an introduction from you, first of all, maybe a little bit about the background of the festival, how it emerged, and uh, we take it from there, I think. All right, wonderful. Um, really nice to meet all of you, uh, or see you is our first moment that we are actually with so many people of the sphere. It's quite nice and exciting. And um, yeah, like as a little presentation, the festival exists now since six years, and we're gonna um, have the sixth edition in one month, starting the build up then. And um, Basically, we founded the festival six years ago with the idea to give a platform for visibility and development of the circus arts in Germany, um, which maybe you know are more based in cabaret style uh, circus performances and not so much in contemporary. And we were trying to just give it a platform and kind of break this vicious cycle to um, allow um, the development of the circus arts. And we started and were communicating a lot about, and this is basically what it refers to as well now in the talk. Um, uh, in the we started basically at the on the grounds that circus arts were not so much considered as an art form, and it was very hard to negotiate and convince politics to basically um, fund circus at all. And we did two editions of the festival without any funding and had some supports, which also represented quite a lot what circus meant in different states, 
through the embassies and institutes of different countries. So we had uh, often we had um, focus on on different countries to invite several performances from one country and have then collaborations with the embassy or the institutes. And since um, four years now, uh, three years now, we have a uh, funding that is yearly and is from the Senate of the city. Um, that's a little overview in one direction. But sorry, we um, <laughs> we basically we are coming completely out of a different framework right now. So jumping in here is um, really going into a diff completely different topic. So I think it's great if you can ask questions and then we can help. Uh, and sure, sure. Um, so maybe you can uh, describe a little bit the institution itself. Who is the uh, performing uh, the circus uh, festival, and um, kind of what is the the scale of the institution? Is it institution? What is the legal framework of it, and so on? Yeah, I think is it, we are not an institution. Definitely not. We are uh, basically we started off as two people working with the festival, and we have a kind of small company. We're working very directly. Now we're three since uh, January. And um, we're not in any way attached to a bigger structure or something. So it's very, very simple, very direct working. And um, we're trying to create yeah, different formats uh, around the festival as well. So in 2017, for example, we were starting to work with the uh, Berliner Festspiele, where also Ullo was participating in the project. And we were, um, we were hosting and curating different events there. And with the festival, our, we really have this uh, focus for 10 days to, throughout the year where we invite different performances and have different events happening. So it's the performances, talks, network events, workshops, etc. And apart from this, um, throughout the year, we try also to organize smaller events like work in progress presentations, um, residencies. And we um, also have another structure with a company where we own our own uh, circus tent, which we then um, try to distribute and uh, support different artists with it. Maybe you want to, or you can describe a little bit the development of the community around the festival as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how it developed, maybe where it started from and where do you see it uh, right now? Yeah, um, the circus community in Germany is quite tightly knit, but distributed in very different sectors. There's a very big um, sector of, in the social field on children and youth circuses. And um, there's a very big scene uh, surrounding the cabarets. It's quite international and there are around 60 cabarets in Germany. And um, the whole scene or the education system until a few years ago was mainly feeding to this cabaret scene. So um, basically the two schools, there are two circus schools in Berlin and one is a state school, which is um, during the normal education. And so it's until 18 years old and they have for at least six years circus education as well. And this is really focused to feed the cabaret scene. So very act-based, very uh, very specific aesthetics, and quite old-fashioned. Um, quite old-fashioned from the east as well, uh, like eastern Germany, old eastern Germany. And um, there was maybe also interesting to know there was a very big um, history and important history of the east in eastern Germany of the state circus, um, which was very very traditional and toured a lot but they actually had a different system of paying and the artists were employed as a, on a, f a fixed basis, basically. So they could work throughout the whole year or, and even if there was not work, they had a salary and were fixed. And for circus arts, there was quite the change when, they, when the GDR was not existing anymore um, because also the state circus was then uh, stopped to work. And for many artists, um, they came onto the free market basically and then joined in many cabarets. And the cabaret scene is quite, is feed, fed a lot by the German circus scene, but also very international. 
uh, often a lot of students from and graduates from Montreal or Sweden as well. Um, so this is the one scene, and then since not too not too many years, but there has been quite a development as well in the contemporary scene where different circus artists are trying to um, create their own shows. But the problem often there is that it lacks um, it lacks a bit of quality often, especially when they're try when they're staying in Germany, because in Germany there is a yeah, there is uh, the platform is missing basically to present the work and to also have input to your own work. You cannot see too much other work, so inspirations um, are mostly outside of Germany. And there is basically the the um, after the school there is a big gap because um, after school when you come out there is really not a big scene of possibilities of presenting work of having residencies of finding any support or anything to, in the end, go towards professionalization uh, as a freelancer or self-employed artist and creator. And many uh, artists go to, go to other schools or, or go outside of Germany to create and work there in collectives, companies, or in their own company. And the more specific local community that you work with in the festival in Berlin, is there like, uh, is it because it's a one time a year event? So how is there like a continuous relationship with this community or um, how would you define it? We're trying to continue to work with the artists over several years, but most of the time we, uh, or we, um, we book artists for one year, um, for the performances when they come to the festival. Um, we try to support the local scene through um, one, I think a big aspect is really to bring different performances as inspirations. And we try to see with them what are the needs and um, the specific needs and wishes of the, of the scene. But um, they are quite diverse and very various. And it's hard to really, we can supply one thing or two things. We can supply what we can with the festival. That's what we try to do. Um, yeah, I think, Hannes, maybe something to add there. I think just one thing that we um, used to work since years with uh, um, private um, circus school in Berlin. And over the years, they they helping us during the festival. And um, this year, we're giving them a slot during the festival to show their um, exit performance. Um, and we try to establish this, yeah, further. And I think what's maybe also another important point is um, that we do have, um, um, how do you say, Verband? Bundesverband. Yes. Uh, yeah, a National Association for Circus, um, basically, which is founded uh, only two two years ago. It was in it was first it was called Initiative for New Circus, and um, to basically provide a network and um, information center um, for the circus scene. And it has now become a national association that are trying to do quite um, necessary networking and providing information. And uh, yeah, we we do uh, basically a network meeting or networking event every year to, throughout the festival over two or three days to kind of map what's happening in the German circus scene, what are the needs, how can we develop, where can we support, who kind of places themselves in this whole network and on the scene, where they can, yeah, what are their roles and what can they help. Um, maybe you can give some examples of the diverse needs of the community that you were uh, describing that the festival, of course, can only uh, respond to um, a small part of those needs. But uh, since you are part of that community, maybe you can give an insight into the, those of the um, local scene. Um, definitely. I mean, it's, it's a bit what I said before. It needs quite radically uh, platforms places where artists can perform, the understanding of, for example, other theaters, that it's, it's possible to book circus and there's an audience for that. And um, to try to interest 
places, institutions as well, to um, to access circus and get in touch there. Um, on the other hand, um, yeah, it's. I think the professionalization is quite necessary. Uh, that is further from that goes around the stage, basically. How to do, and that's also the question that you evoked. Are um, where we kind of decided, or we're thinking a bit different. If um, if artists or that artists don't need their producers anymore, what you said, and um, my impression was that artists actually here really do need producers, and uh, many of them are wishing for it because it's this completely different domain that um, where the kind of the knowledge is lacking on on budgeting, on producing, on communication, on networking, etc. And it's also a different field that maybe is not necessary, uh, or it is necessary to have, but it maybe would be good to not focus on that. Um, then there is one big need for the whole scene to basically understand what, um, how the scene looks like, what exists, what doesn't exist, how many artists are there, where are they, how many performance places are there, to basically have a mapping to have some statistics and numbers with which then we could approach also the government and funding structures to actually explain what the scene looks like and what is what is needed there. And this, this mapping is happening through the association as well. They're trying to do this. Um, it lacks residency places. There are maybe four or five residency places in Germany, it's not too many. And um, many of the youth circuses, for example, have often their tents and places that they could offer, but they don't have the structures where they actually provide the, um, provide really, or they don't have a fixed structure that is really readable to um, provide the information to artists how to apply and how to access the residences. Um, it really needs funding for sure the understanding of funding structures is actually for now during the pandemic there's for the first time a place where circus receives funding there's a five million uh, support for the circus arts now during corona so circus arts can apply and there's a huge lack of structure there as well because the funding is being distributed by a social circus um, that are lacking absolutely the professionality on how to distribute the money and um, kind of read all the applications, etc. So it's it's a bit um, I think it could go on and on like where where th there are needs. I mean there are needs in so many in every other country as well to continue developing. But I think the main thing what I see is necessary now is really the support of this association and collecting and distributing information about circus and about the scene to understand and communicate with governments. For example, as well, there are no um, contact persons in the governments who are responsible or who actually have circus on their kind of landscape of arts that where support is needed. And for, to have, for example, in every major city or in every district, or at least one person maybe in the whole of Germany to um, know a little bit more and invite them to basically understand about the circus scene and the circus arts and uh, receive numbers and statistics and understand what this art form is actually to go see performances etc. Um, maybe you also can like did you can you maybe describe also a little bit um, the pattern of behavior within the community itself, like what kind of relationships exist between uh, the different um, actors within the, the scene? Uh, is there like, in, like some kind of uh, collaborate, like and, and because of this precarious situation of the circus uh, scene in Germany, would you say, how would you describe the relation between the different uh, artists or the different groups or? Mm -hmm. There's something that I'm trying to understand as well. Um, in Berlin, there are a lot of circus artists being here, but as there is not really a center for them to train together, for example, like in Barcelona or in Toulouse or anywhere, or in Stockholm as well, um, as there is no real center, it's hard for them to actually meet and connect. 
and the different scenes are quite um, separated. So we have the cabaret scene and the, the artists who are more counting themselves towards this scene and um, the, the free or independent scene is also a different sector and it misses for sure these meeting points. They are connected, they're, they are sometimes working together, but it also it, there are not too many projects that are where all these artists work together and connect. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody, everybody is super interested and would like to connect at this level. And uh, last time we were meet, we met, we were discussing also the interface between the local scene in Berlin and in Germany and the international scene. Uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of insight into that. Mm, well, I think the like the connection of the local and the international scene is quite similar to every other country. There is a there are many meeting points, especially again in the cabaret scene, where the international scene and the local scene connect and work together. Um, I yeah, I'm I don't I'm not really exactly sure how to provide more information because it's really it's I have the feeling that the circus scene is extremely international and very closely knit. I think we were discussing last time the network, the inter-circus, I think, uh, and then sort of the positioning of the German uh, circus scene uh, in relation to uh, other, like for example, the French uh, circus scene and, um, and uh, Swedish circus scene, maybe. Yeah. Um, is Sorry, but it's it's again the same point. Is like the the network network is uh, in some part existing, but is less developed than in other countries, and it misses certain points. Um, it's there's not really more I can add there. I think. I guess what I'm trying to ask is, uh, in which how 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 connected it is in the sense of also of support. Like, do do the networks support each other? Do you uh, like how much in relation between the relationship between like local production and uh, co-producing productions that are happening with uh, other countries that this kind of this is kind of the mapping that I'm looking at looking at um, I'm trying to think how many international projects there would be or co-productions really um, I think mainly German artists would go to other companies to work with them um, otherwise within the international scene, there's not too much, honestly, in international projects or corporation projects happening. There, there is now, there are a few connections and it sparks up more and more. Now there's a, like a new project of a training space here in Berlin called Catapult and a training and residency space that are now um, having a residency project together or offering uh, with a space in, um, in Denmark, in, uh, Odense, I think, uh, Dynamo space. Um, so there are some things that are sparking up. Um, there are some festivals that are cooperating with the uh, Surface Next project, which is the European platform. Um, there is as well a research project that we founded together with a, a space in uh, Vienna and in Switzerland that is really mainly focused on providing artists spaces and time to research and not actually focus on the results of their work, but really take time to research. You see, well, we were working as well with the Originale to try to yeah, give space and time to really think a bit less goal-oriented or result-oriented. Mm, I'm thinking, do you have any other, um, Hannes? Are you because I'm also not coming up now with other international projects. Ole, you want? Yeah, I was just thinking uh, when you did uh, the Originale, for instance, I was, I was just, uh, the, the project you did uh, where I was a part also uh, in the uh, Festspiele there, uh, it, it seemed uh, very natural to to becoming there. I mean, we were a, a large group of international like artists and, and directors and, and so on. 
and it was if like this is just reflection but a small uh, seed like that at least it, it could it, that could uh, benefit the the German or, or Berlin circus uh, uh, so much in so short time it, it became like a I was assuming that this was a starting point for a, uh, a greater connection between between Berlin and the international sector of uh, circus and it's, it's, it, but it just disappeared like it's, it's, it feels like there's a lot of like moments that has happened and then they're like kind of disappearing for some reason uh, uh, it's, it, yeah, I mean, funding reasons, but it's uh, it would have been so easy to have Berlin as a hub for for the contemporary circus as well, uh, in a much stronger way than it is today. Uh, so it's just uh, uh, it, it would be natural for the community to be a part of the of the Berlin scene. Uh, I mean, a lot of Swedish people are going are living there now, uh, circus artists uh, doing stuff, weird projects of different kinds, but it's not. Uh, then they tour mostly outside of Germany. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, it is it is true that I find whenever something happens, you can really see how beneficial it is and how open basically the complete scene is to um, to see this, to uh, to experience and to connect. Um, but I I would say that this is quite natural and um, usual to the whole worldwide circus scene. I would say that in many places when something like this would happen um, it's like a network, like a mycelial network basically that happens that everybody is symbiotically um, enjoying and um, profiting from what happens. Um, I wouldn't say that it, like, okay, the original project, the research project really it popped up and then it disappeared completely. Um, but what I would say, what my impression is that since the last like five to 10 years, maybe really the last five years, quite a lot has happened. And I have a feeling the complete scene is making really big steps to, um, to develop and change and learn and connect. And this is, this is quite, uh, quite strong to feel, I think, to see. And it's, it is not developing in a, in a short vision way, but really, in the long term, it's providing more and more structures and trying to trying to find ways um, how to push the scene and how to do, yeah, how to educate and perform, etc. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if you if you were to think about the future of the um, of the Berlin Circus Festival, what are the what are the kind of hopes that you have for um, the future of the festival in the short and maybe in a bit of a longer term, as much as we can do longer term speculation at the point, at this point. Um, well, in the very short term, <laughs> I'm hoping that the lockdown is not going to be prolonged in Germany. Um, and that the kind of the, that performances are allowed um, again in December. That's really the very, short term and also it's going to be the same for next year that we're hoping what 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 is happening and how it continues is a big question i mean i find why and how the performing arts are viewed and perceived and treated in germany like this at the moment or worldwide basically there is a huge support financially for the performing arts field now and um, this provides uh, possibility to really develop and change the field, which is cool. Um, it still misses that basically independent artists are supported. And I think we, as a festival, we received uh, funding for the next four years or within this year. So until 23, we are in some way safe. And we can see that kind of this funding and uh, also the history of the festival it really does support that um, it, it gives, us, gives, gives us enough weight to ask for more funding and different projects and kind of like include being included in your project as well. Um, so in this way, I, I see that basically the structure is quite stable now and I'm hoping and looking forward how things will 
connect more to and develop and professionalize. So I'm looking forward to see what grows now around the festival. I think the festival itself has a quite clear structure and we're also planning and hoping to basically keep it like this a bit, to keep it growing slowly, but naturally and organically, to not go too wide and too big. But um, there are projects happening, for example, like the um, European Night of the Circus, which also arrived in Germany. So we're trying to also push that and be part of that in next November, next year. And now with this winter edition, is also an idea to see maybe if it can happen twice a year, the festival, or maybe have a winter edition every second year. Um, we're also trying to look, and I think that's also one part of a dream to find a fixed place where we could um, where we could offer really throughout the year residencies and invite artists to support them. And we're trying to develop a mentoring program to offer basically our knowledge of administration and production, etc., around the stage and try to help and support artists in this way. And then possibly also um, offer a performance space throughout the whole year. Um, also another dream somehow is, uh, is basically a training center, a big hub where people could meet and train together. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think the, for the festival, these are pretty much the big dreams. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I'm just wondering if we want to maybe open it up for um, discussion uh, with the, the people in the in the room. Um, I cannot see, it's very hard for me to moderate this uh, kind of uh, setting. Yeah, so I, can't see the, yeah I, would, I would jump in. Um, yeah. Yesterday there was this discussion where um, Sara shared uh, her perspective as a producer and uh, it, it became very clear that there is an administration class that holds a lot of information and that clearly the artists are, are at the bottom of that uh, of that pyramid or of that organization. So I guess my question, or, or, or maybe it's just a reflection that we can iterate together around. With the end, we're thinking a lot about the idea of a Staatskunst. Uh, like when we create the sphere, we're creating a vehicle or, or a possibility to change the way power is distributed within the uh, performing arts ecosystem. And it might be a bit utopic and Part of the utopia is that we hope that we can open up some of the, cal the calcified institution as it is. And in the case of the Berlin Circus Festival, the discussion we had last time is that from the German perspective, uh, the, the circus art is less um, appreciated than in other countries, so you lack even the recognition. So I, I'm wondering if the sphere, concretely speaking, could be envisaged as a tool for bringing up a better recognition for uh, circus artists in minor countries, that is not Montreal or Stockholm or, or France for that matter. Or is it a hope that you have, uh, guys, with regards to the sphere? Or, or what could we do to, to, to augment that, uh, that uh, visibility and appreciation? Um, I think what's really interesting is that it will offer um, basically a door into funding structures and um, visibility in different scenes. Um, I think we saw that there's quite a lot of funding, for example, in digitalization of arts and um, programs towards this. And I had the feeling that there is quite a lot of, yeah, there's a big scene and a lot of knowledge collected there. and to then connect this to the circus arts seems quite far-fetched for many people, but interesting. And it sparks really this, this eye-opening of not really being sure what this actually is and means, and then people would kind of enter the, enter the subject of the circus. I think my, uh, our worry and experience is a bit from the last years that whenever we um, approach different new structures, whenever a circus is involved or is brought up, 
that um, people are quite um, have quite clear images of what it would be, and uh, prejudices also of how to how to deal with these with the topic and how to deal with us basically or with project ideas and i have a feeling often it's it's a bit hard to we really have to explain people a lot or provide a very clear project and i think in this way the sphere is quite interesting because it offers this completely different aspect and perspective so i think it can definitely help and I'm more curious about the whole process, how it would be and where basically where we would um, dock on basically. Yeah, I would like to. Uh, yeah, take Gabriel first yeah. and then Elisa. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was just curious how important it is for you to, to separate or like to keep circles as a form separated from other art forms. Um, because also in your long term vision, there was never kind of this vision of maybe merging with, let's say we have in, in, in Germany, this Figurentheater or other kind of stage based forms. Um, and also in, in, in relation to the sphere, I would be interested in how much this kind of opens up the, the edges of this form or not? Um, I think for our vision is basically that the complete performing arts are mixing more and more. And we see circus in this as one also in some way, basically a driving force because I see it as a quite free space. Like outside of the cabaret scene is quite free that you can develop a lot of things there. And that is quite you can include basically every art form or every inspiration, aesthetics, etc., that you're interested in. And in the festival is not entirely focused on, it is a circus festival, so um, we try to keep a core of circus, but it can go in very different directions. And we had already performances that were quite more, like what you also saw, you saw um, uh, Henrik and Luis yesterday, right? Yes, yes. It is more like in some in some way also a documentary in some way um, or more into this performing art the performance art field so we included them uh, we had other performances that are more into puppetry puppetry or some more into theater we had a com dance company com uh, coming to perform with us because they had quite a lot of very physical um, acro not acrobatic necessarily but uh, physical movement research so i think this is quite open and can develop really in different fields it would be super interesting to involve it more but um i think in some way it's just this wish also to keep keep some core and but this is often it can even just be the intention i think i think sir what circus in the end can be is such a wide um, definition basically what, what is performed in it. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say to Gabriel, also come, come join the circus in that sense. Uh, uh, rather, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting uh, definition. Uh, the definition discussion is, is uh, both interesting and, and not so interesting, but, but uh, I would say like, uh, maybe it's, it's totally what, uh, if you're uh, inspired to, to work with with this year, maybe you're you're actually a closet circus uh, artist, and uh, that's what you're sensing. I don't know. <laughs> I I think that very often, or like from what I see, especially I think in Germany, I'm not too sure how it's in other places, but this uh, differentiation between the different um, different. Uh, practices like circus, uh, visual arts, performing arts, there is, it's very much like from um, top down kind of perspective, because if you want to apply for funding, do you, to which one of the, to which one of the schemes do you fit? Are you a visual artist? Are you, and actually surprisingly very often, which I, I mean, I didn't know that when I just arrived, but uh, you're being evaluated based very often on your education. So if you're educated as a, as a visual artist, then you can apply for visual arts 
funding. If you, at some point in your career, I guess when there's enough years passed between you and your education, maybe you can try to check out other schemes. But, uh, but I think this kind of um, division between the, the different um, sectors is, is pretty much um, implemented from the funding structures. Like, uh, I think within the scene, I see from the theater or the dance scene that there are a lot of circus artists participating in the in performances and productions and the, the lines are definitely it's or for example, like clowning, which is, uh, is very is, is completely like grabbed in the theater scene, I think. And yeah. uh, so actually, when you look at the practices themselves, they're not that far from each other like um they're they're much more integrated and, and disconnected and i would uh, uh, hand elisa. over the word to, to elisa who was uh, yeah. trying to ask for a while okay so I, i'm a bit on thin i still since i am more as a closet circus choreographer or i i've been in one performance as i and i was called circus artist in it uh, but i i did mostly dance uh, but I, I just had a note on um, Eric's question about the visibility and status somehow, and also the sphere, or that I've been that I was thinking a bit yesterday evening about this, like uh, the <clears throat> so the, here comes the thin uh, ice part more because I'm not uh, this is it's just observations from a bit far away, but the, it seems that at least in Stockholm the circus. Uh, New circus uh, lacks like this platform for uh, for artistic research. I mean, like or and uh, or and um, yeah, like a collective uh, um, thinking. What can circus be? And this happened has been happening in con contemporary dance and choreography for a long time. It's very established like this. What can choreography be? And that and and, and this research and uh, things. So so for. Or maybe then sphere as uh, could be a, uh, could create this uh, be a part of creating this platform to to kind of uh, to um, to then give this uh, status or visibility or whatever uh, to for the for the circus to kind of like be taken more seriously. I guess um, is a bit this question. I mean, to, to basically have a space and uh, freedom to freedom to think about it, really. I think so many artists in Germany, at least circus artists, so many of them are just, I don't, I don't want to say fighting for their survival, but are just busy with working all the time. And most of them have a hard time, I think, to actually take, have a space where it's possible to actually think outside of this out of this outside of this survival mode uh, or hard working mode and i think for this the sphere can definitely be it to collect and create um, a space where a lot of different people come together and can give different input and ask and raise these questions and offer also experience and solutions And then I also had one thing, one more thing, but it was it's not a question. It's just a, it's a question. I was just wondering if you had uh, if you know about the booking system thing that they are doing in Denmark about it's not in circus, it's in dance to access all the institutions that have free spaces. I don't. I, I think it's just something I, I tried to look the uh, I find it uh, online, but I can't remember the name of it. But we tried to make a similar system here in Stockholm. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, called maximum spaces where the institutions would open their, uh, but as you said, the, mo most of the institutions they uh, lack structure for for making it happen. Like somebody who comes and opens the door or gives a card or stuff like that, or, or makes the booking and stuff. And uh, and it it was it could have been resolved here, but the interest for this short time booking uh, spaces was so little in the dams. I mean, people don't want to book a, a studio for tomorrow. It just doesn't, it does not energizing enough to work mm. that way. But, uh, but I don't know, uh, but the Denmark system is, uh, they have, uh, they, it's working well. So I was thinking that if it's, if you're not um, friends with that, I could, uh, it, I would recommend to check it out, but it's not about, this was really just that, um, about something else. Um, I think there there are a few. Um, I'm just trying to check it out. Yeah, 
There are a few systems that are trying to collect information about this, um, German-wide and worldwide as well, um, especially in dance studios and um, where, are, where you can see a collection of all the spaces that are available and times. There is not a central booking system in this way. Um, I think the, yeah, the main issue there is as well regarding the money and that most of the spaces cannot just provide a space and are quite expensive. Regarding the circus, at least in Berlin, it's quite hard to actually find a place where you can train uh, for an affordable price. And they are also fighting on trying to understand how to book and organize themselves. But it would definitely also be interesting to open this up nationwide or more than that. I'm just gonna share with you here um, a website. Uh, it's called Perform Your Art, where um, a circus artist also tried to collect, but um, she first started off German-wide, but now more to um, collect information of spaces that you can, um, where you can train or research or have residences, etc. And uh, I mean, on the map, it's quite interesting to see uh, how little basically there is in Germany, I would say. Or, I mean, compared to France, it's quite okay, actually. Um, yeah. um, so I was thinking just maybe um, before we finish this session, um, I also wanted to comment because um, for those of, those of us that have been here uh, for ye yesterday and also this morning, uh, I feel like there's like this big gap between the, the kind of speculative realm that we were moving around in. And when we go down to the very granular uh, reality of, uh, of, for example, the Berlin Circus Festival, uh, I, I feel like there is some, um, some gap there that we are, um, that I wanted to bring up. This is also why I thought it would be really, really helpful. And I really wanna thank you uh, um, guys that you could make it and uh, share your, your experience. Because I feel that there is, that we are talking on one level on a very like meta, meta questions and also uh, on, on the other hand, very detailed uh, thinking about the mechanisms already of the sphere, whereas uh, this kind of mapping of the actual needs on the ground or the situation on the ground um, can really inform the design of the, of the sphere, I think, and should. Um, Absolutely, and, yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's a bit the reason why we wanted you to be there this morning with uh, Laura. So we have like both uh, sides of the picture. And um, one idea that we had with Yael after speaking with you guys the first time was like, wow, maybe we should conceive of the Berlin Circus Festival as one user case, like as uh, running one scenario. What would it mean for this year to produce a festival? All right. So, so that's one thing. Next week, we have three days of game design sessions. And I would suggest maybe we try uh, to bring you in and, and try to run one scenario of like, what does it mean to organize a festival for you guys? And, and what could be uh, assisted by the sphere as a, a digital instrument? And, and really go from uh, bottom up, like from these challenges, concrete challenges, and then maybe allow ourselves to dream beyond the public funding sphere. That is, if we didn't have the public funding structure and limitations, what else would we imagine in terms of performances, circus performances that would become maybe a new art form, like beyond the strictures that we are uh, discussing at the, at the moment. So just to allow ourselves to dream and speculate together as well, uh, I think could be very interesting as a design exercise. But also I want to add that, that both uh, for, for, from my and Sarah's perspective in uh, beforehand for the, speaker, the, the mapping uh, being done also in the, in the, in the, the Swedish national uh, uh, context, but also more, more uh, broadly, is, is really uh, been done quite, quite uh, uh, deeply as well, as a, both as a, as a shared person for, for the national organization for, for the circus artists here in Sweden that I've been for for a few years or and also sitting in the arts grants committee as the one of the 
person, the person with the service expertise, maybe uh, talking about if you're educated, you get the grant. Uh, who who are the ecosystem in Sweden? Uh, what's their reality? What's uh, uh, I mean, Jay's reality is that he, when we have a meeting, he has to walk around and build stuff all by himself because he, he's so sad and lonely <laughs> over in the other. No, I'm just saying that there's a mapping and a reality check happening, but also we try to push, uh, we try to push also ourselves to think outside of, of the, of the, uh, the limiting, the restrictions, and see like what could, what could spark something else and, and we should be in both levels we have to face the, the real we also have to break the, the perceived real <laughs> and so I, but so that's it's it's uh, I, I agree and i disagree at the same time because i think we are doing the mapping we are living here doing circus and so on but sure. maybe it's actually yeah, sure, the, this dichotomy is pointing towards uh, a need for uh, spreading that methodology uh, to a more uh, sort of uh, international domain, you know? So, like, if you, we have this expertise because of a uh, um, practice state infrastructure or interaction uh, or interface here in Sweden, maybe uh, Berlin needs that um, as a mapping tool to become self aware of itself. Yeah. So, perhaps. Um, and also, some, one other thing that uh, they mentioned was this, yeah, this uh, need for borderless connectivity, this need for having one platform where you know funding can be aggregated and you know find its flows and so on. So it's all pointing towards this idea of a platform uh, which facilitates this visibility. So it could be some kind of network with consequences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also the research, which also plugs in towards you know like. Uh, Mm, creating a circus research knowledge base you know it's, it's all kind, kind of to me it seems like you know whatever the sphere will become the platform thesis is sort of validated with the feedbacks that I'm uh, having from this conversation essentially for funding for research and uh, for self-awareness for the roles to uh, be aware of uh, themselves the supply chain to be aware of themselves mm -hmm. Maybe a, just a mental note, uh, we would have had a meeting with all the partners already in September, but we couldn't because of COVID. So maybe one assignment uh, for the meeting in two weeks would be to have everyone participating in the meeting, sharing a bit of a mapping, already uh, preset mapping sure. of what their situation mm -hmm. is, just yeah. to accelerate the process and, and, and have as exhaustive of a, an overview as we can entering in. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I uh, put in the chat the links to these uh, mappings that the IETM uh, did. Uh, I really find it super productive and, uh, and I think it, we can also really work from there. There are a lot of, uh, I think that if I just, just to, sorry, before we just conclude, I just want to one moment to look in more in detail at that. Um, at that um, scheme and um, just to show that um, so when we go um, more in detail sorry it's not super comfortable platform I have to say but it has a lot of information on it uh, they did this kind of um, uh, division, which I feel a little bit artificial between economic, environmental, social, and so on, and artistic, because obviously all of these uh, elements are uh, interconnected. But um, there are um, very specific um, statements and uh, testimonies even from uh, specific participants of the network of IITM in which they, uh, they share their experiences. So for example, in the non-sustainable uh, funding uh, practices, they are or economic practices, then uh, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, useful information, um, Creative Europe, like for example, this has been implemented uh, by the Creative Europe since then, the support for smaller countries and so on. 
Um, and then there is, which I find the most interesting part, because in a way we already know the pitfalls of the existing system, but uh, the, um, ah, sorry, I was looking at the promises. That was the, that was the, exactly, that was, that's, that's why that was the promises. But, um, uh, so yeah, it's the promises. It's like, what are emerging uh, behaviors that we can already identify, economic behaviors within the, the scene? And these are divided into external and internal. So the, the kind of economic behaviors that are implemented from top down and the ones that are practiced from uh, bottom up. And I think that if we take time to look into this, uh, that can be uh, very useful. And then of course, based on this, to design the transition towards uh, uh, the future that we are hoping to be in. And uh, I think one of the most interesting, maybe also for us for the sphere, is the radar of values. So around which values is the, uh, this future organized in terms of uh, all of these uh, fairness, diversity, so this solidarity, um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay,